Making quilts is a marathon craft. And sometimes we need shorter projects to give us a change of pace or have it fit into our available time. So bag making is a great alternative as it uses many of the supplies that we already have in our sewing spaces. My next guest, Sarah Lawson, is a prolific bag designer of all sorts of shapes and sizes. And she shows you how to make them every week on her YouTube channel, So Sweetness. She generously shared her story and some tips for making your first bag. So grab your sewing and a cup of tea, and here's my interview with Sarah Lawson. Thank you, Sarah, for being on the show. Whereabouts in the U.S. are you coming to us from? Uh, we live in Chicago, uh, in the Midwest, so... Are you in Chicago proper or? We were in Chicago proper until two years ago. We moved out into the suburbs. How did you come to YouTube? About, I think it was about six years ago. Um, I had already gotten started writing patterns and I had my blog and we knew nothing about filming video. My husband quit his job um, very suddenly and we just were all in at that point. So we started filming step-by-step -step videos for my past patterns, and then we started live streaming. And if you were to look at our live streams from the beginning till now, definitely lots of improvement. My husband's constantly updating cameras and different equipment, so everything's constantly always changing in the studio for sure. So what brought you to bag making? I have always been a big fan of Amy Butler and she had this book called Style Stitches and there were 12 bags in the book, uh, 12 sewing patterns. And um, I had a friend at the time, um, throughout the year we made one project a month and I was just really completely in love with making bags. All my friends were making quilts or quilt pattern designers and I love making quilts as well in my free time, what I call like my selfish sewing projects. but. The bags just really challenge me. Um, I'm not a math person, but I just really love figuring things out, figuring how things go together. Um, I was recently working on a pattern for a wallet and it took so much mental energy, just all the pieces that I had planned, fitting them together. And that's my favorite aspect of all of the things that I do, uh, the designing and figuring things out. You put a lot of effort into making them right and perfect. I hope everybody appreciates how much effort you put into that. <laughs> I mean, I certainly do my best. A really great challenge keeps me busy. And yeah, there's many times where I make things, take them apart, redo them. The wallet that I was just mentioning, uh, by the end of the finished wallet, the fabric had start, started getting threadbare just because of how many times I had ripped and redone all the pieces. So yeah, I, I do my best to make the projects uh, fun to sew, but still nice looking. I know quilt pattern designers have the challenge of samples, like they make the, the one and then they send it out to testers. How many prototypes do you have to make with each bag project? It depends. Um, if it's very specific and the type of design means like that pieces have to fit together exactly, I'll often make a prototype with just the foam interfacing for the exterior. So kind of like a muslin, like people would do for a garment, like not making the whole garment, but just the basics, just to see how the pieces fit together. I don't always have to do that. If it's say, for instance, a bag with a flap, so there's less fitting involved. My process, regardless, is I'll write the pattern instructions first. I'll draft the pattern pieces on my computer. I use Adobe Illustrator, and then I start cutting my fabric and following my own instructions. And I make corrections as I go. So I have a red pen and I'm making adjustments, whether it's wording, if I need to add things to make it more clear, or if my numbers were off, say for the positioning of a magnetic snap. But if I do make a prototype, it's the one prototype uh, before it goes to the pattern testers. And before I send the pattern to the pattern testers, I need to take step photos. So I've made the, the project in its entirety the one time. And then when we film the video, I'll make it a second time to document the whole process in the, the step video as well. So you use a beautiful assortment of fabrics in lots of different colorways and lots of different designers. Is there a palette that you prefer working with over others? Well, Tulip Pink is my favorite fabric designer. I've found over the years that for especially the step photos and maybe somewhat the videos, 
even though a bag with like black fabric or a black background looks really great. Like some fabrics just don't really translate in the photos, the step photos really well. That's my number one priority when I'm making a bag. I have to think of the other things. I can't just choose like, oh, this is my favorite fabric. So I'll just use this. I have to consider when we film the video, is it going to create a more effect, meaning like uh, sort of like stripes or lines over the screen, you know, when we're filming the video, the tulip pink fabrics usually work really great. With that being said, I also have to consider if the print's too busy, if they're not going to be able to see like details, if I'm placing a pocket, if they're not going to be able to tell where that pocket's been placed because the fabric is so busy. So it's really a, a juggle, like uh, all the background and also making a pretty bag. I understand that you have to center a piece of fabric, like the design and the repeat. And Tula has those beautiful mirror patterns that you could mm -hmm. really make a beautiful center. Yeah. But that whole photography side of it, never thought of that before. You must have learned that along the way. Well, yeah, because, you know, um, I might get an email question. Hey, I was working on this pattern and it might be a pattern that's a couple years old. I couldn't quite tell from the photo what was here. And then it's just background experience, things that I can see based on customer feedback that either worked or didn't work in the past. And so I try to adjust things going forward. I, I don't remake the pattern just because I can see it could, the photos could have been better. I just try to improve for future projects. And of course, every time the fabric's gonna be different. So you really don't know until you sort of finish and get it out there if it's what you were going for as far as the clarity in the pictures or in the video. Something I just realized that you would probably also be more sensitive to fashion than quilters. Like you probably have seasons and styles and things like that that you need to showcase with your with your bags and your fabric choices um, i i'm going to be completely honest when i design things it's either things that people have requested a lot in the past or something that i sketch or come up with that i think oh that will be really challenging to figure out like the pattern instructions and like that's really exciting to me so like one of those two things that's usually how i choose uh, what kind of patterns uh, to design or come up with as a quilter, if I want to make a bag, what additional items do I need? Well, interfacing is probably the most important. I know, obviously, for quilts, you have the batting. There's so many different interfacings out there, so many different manufacturers, sometimes making similar interfacings, but called a different name. And so when I first started writing patterns, I vowed to write in my uh, supply list uh, specifics. And this was years ago, but I had worked with some patterns in my beginning bag making journey where in the pattern instructions that would just say something vague like medium weight interfacing or ultra firm interfacing and it was really hard as a newbie kind of nailing down what exactly that means and so uh, I list the specifics in the pattern um, and I always talk about alternatives such as foam interfacing I use by any soft and stable but there's also Bozal Interform, Pellon uh, Flex Foam, Automotive Headliner there's different options out there but I list in my patterns what I personally use and then if people need help choosing an alternative such as people not living in the United States sometimes overseas there's different manufacturers different products that are very similar called different names and so there's always different choices and lots of choices, but I think it's helpful to start with something specific. And then um, I can either assist someone with different choices or they can make changes based on their personal preference. And do you have a beginner pattern that they should start with? I always recommend uh, my Baker Street bag. It's a free pattern and video. And I think it's a great introduction to bag making. It's sort of a medium sized handbag and um, it has a, a zipper as the top closure, so it's a great introduction to working with zippers if people haven't uh, worked with them before, especially since it's free and then there's also a, a video attached to it. I think it's a great introduction to either bags or to working with my patterns specifically. Why are people so scared of working with zippers? I think anything that you haven't done before is often a little scary. Um, but once you give it a try, I've never heard anyone say that they were afraid of working with zippers. And then when they worked with them, they just hated them or they would never work with them again. So I think it's just 
dipping your toes in, giving it a try. And also practice makes better. Even myself, I'm still improving on either bag making or quilt making skills. There's always a new technique to learn. And that's what's great about the internet and about YouTube. You can always learn a new skill and it's definitely a learning experience. I just tell people, you know, make a bag, either make it again or make another pattern. Just keep making stuff. So what was your beginner mistake that you made starting out? Probably thinking that suggestions and patterns when I was working from someone else's pattern in the beginning were not important and that I could just either skip an instruction or like it wouldn't matter. For instance, if in either a quilt pattern or bag pattern, the designer said, press, press the seam a certain way, or I might think to myself, I don't really need to do that. I'd just rather move on to the next step. Obviously all that stuff's important. And now I know that as a pattern designer, it wouldn't be noted in the instructions if it didn't need to be done, but things like that, where I just thought I knew better when I really didn't. Unnecessary steps, I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, as you say, there's a reason why the, the designer put them in. So what are the, what are the, the common mistakes that you see uh, new bag makers doing? I would say for someone new to working with patterns, all my patterns are currently PDF patterns. Years ago, we had actual physical paper patterns that were sold in quilt shops, but now they're, my patterns are all PDF. I would say the common thing with newbies to bag making is printing out the pattern pieces. Um, I always recommend people use Adobe Reader. It's a free program that anyone can download if they don't already have it, although some devices already do. Sometimes your computer or device, when you go to open a PDF file, it opens in a web browser. And sometimes people think printing from a web browser is okay. But sometimes in reality, it distorts the size of the pattern pieces or things print out and they just don't look right. So most common, common question we get is for printing issues. That's a big one for um, paper piecing, foundation paper piecing too. It's yeah, for sure. Out. You can just be off just a bit. Right. And it really mm -hmm. messes you up. How have the events of the past two years made you pivot? I think we were really lucky in that we were already down the path of doing the live videos and our online workshops. And when people were needing something to do at home, um, we already had those things that we could provide them. And I would say our physical products, the things that we ship out, I would say that that increased as well. And so thankfully we were just in a good spot when everything hit. So as a YouTuber, and a professional pattern maker, how much of your day is spent making videos and making bags? I was laughing when you started asking that question because I think people probably assume that I sew a lot. And I would say the sewing portion is probably a smaller percentage. A lot of my time is spent on the back end, either the website, customer service, um, assisting with orders, my husband now handles a lot of that. The sewing time is minimal, which is why it's so important to me to have some selfish sewing time, like working on a quilt or some other project, because if I didn't have that, if I was just relying on the, the pat, you know, the pattern sewing, uh, it would be a very small amount of time every month not sewing. Are you driven in your patterns by what you want to make or by what your customers want? I think it's a little of both. If it's something that was suggested to me and just not interesting to me. And by that, I just mean when I look at it, if it's something I'm excited to figure out. Um, and also I, I get so many requests, you know, there's no way I could attend to all of them. So I just do my best. And I also try to consider patterns that are not out there. I had requests for bags to carry dogs or smaller pets. And this was a, a few years ago now, but I wrote a pattern called the best friend pet carrier and it's a dog carrier uh, with metal frames to make it structured and stand up by its own and things like that are exciting to me too like hitting different subjects for patterns that are not commonly seen out there already so what's your favorite bag my favorite bag is usually the last one that i finished writing as far as patterns go i'm sort of like a, a squirrel seeing seeing a, a shiny object like it's always on to the next thing my favorite type is probably backpacks. So I've done a few backpack patterns already. I'm finishing up another one right now. And I really love backpacks. I love using them personally. My family loves using them when we go on trips or go out somewhere. It's fun to take a backpack along, especially like a, a custom made in someone's special fabric. I have to make one 
um, to carry my photography equipment. I've tried to buy a couple and they've never quite worked. That's one of my goals this year is to make a good bag to carry my, my camera gear. Yeah. Plus then you can make it for all the things you're putting inside your different lenses, make it exactly what you need. How do you balance being a mother and a business owner and your hobby? It's really, really hard. And plus, we recently got a puppy a couple months ago. So it's uh, definitely a juggle. And we fit it in whenever we can to make sure we still have our family time. For instance, we needed to get some filming done for some new patterns that are coming out soon. And so last night, my husband and I, after dinner, we're working on that until um, I think maybe 930 at night. And so the kids were on puppy duty during that time. So it's constantly give and take everyone trying their best to be flexible and somehow we get it done. So have you passed on your love of bag making to the kids? Uh, When my daughter, before she started kindergarten, uh, she's in seventh grade now, uh, we would work on little bag projects together, just self-drafted, really small bags. But since then, she really hasn't shown much of an interest. And I'm really big into not pushing the things that I like onto my kids. Um, So maybe one day she'll come back around and uh, be interested in sewing. How about your husband? Has he learned to make a bag? When was it? Last year, he made one of my little pouches on camera. And of course, we didn't show the whole, you know, two hours of him making the pouch. We condensed it to like a five minute video. Uh, but we shared it on one of our live shows. And uh, the funny thing about that is while he ended up making the pouch, he originally told everyone a few years ago on the live shows that he was going to make one of my backpacks. It's it's the Park Sling backpack. And it's not super advanced, but it is kind of, you know, up there as far as skill level goes. And uh, he likes the look of it, of course, but as his first sewing project, I'd never would have recommended uh, a project like that. So he's, you know, he backed up and went to something simpler. Um, a pouch, which was just like front and back fabric with a zipper on top. So much easier and he got it done. So everyone was happy. (laughs) Are there any other bag makers or quilters in your family? My mom's made a few of my projects, but my mom, my aunt and my grandma, they all sew. So I guess it's in the family. So let's talk about your quilts a bit. What kind of types of quilts do you like to make? Basically anything that catches my eye. I like a lot of uh, geometric uh, quilts. I like using solids for my quilts. Edita Sitar has a pattern called Alaska. Um, I was making the rainbow version of it. I made one full version of it in sort of lighter colors with a cream background. Friend wanted to sew along with me. Um, his name is Charlie. And so we were making our second versions of that quilt in a black background. Charlie finished his a couple weeks ago and mine is still maybe 10 or 15% done. So yeah, basically every, anything that I find online or Instagram that catches my eye as far as quilts go. I either purchase the kit or I get the pattern and sort of list out my fabric or color choices for a later date. I have uh, a corner of my room dedicated to all of the quilt patterns that I plan on working on uh, in the future. So there's probably at least a dozen of them over there at this point. So is that where you consume your scraps from your bag making? I don't have a plan for my bag scraps, at least usually the scraps ended, end up being on the bigger side. I am hoping to just send them off to someone who likes working with scraps rather than working with them with myself because uh, the bags are all prints usually and the quilts I like to work with solids. And so it's kind of doesn't align there as far as that goes. Isn't that interesting? Two different uh, sides of your personality there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Now with quilting, there's a whole thing about labeling. Do you label your quilts? I started doing that recently because I joined the Sweetwater Custom Label Club. I have no excuse not to label the quilt since I'm starting to accumulate all these really nice custom uh, quilt labels with my name on them already. So, but at the beginning years ago, I, I was just excited enough to finish the quilt and in a hurry to photograph it and totally skipped the label. But now I'm definitely labeling them. And how do you label your bags? I don't label my bags. Honestly, most of them stick around in my house for samples, maybe, you know, bags that I'll use on my set behind me one day, or if a customer has a specific question um, that I need to pull one of the bags out. Uh, For instance, the other day, someone emailed me, I have a pattern for a purse organizer, and they wanted to know if that purse organizer fit into a specific um, bag that I've designed. And so I had to run down the basement pull out both of those samples and see like, all right, is it going to fit inside? Obviously 
I know what the finished dimensions are, but the finished dimensions of a purse organizer might not necessarily compute evenly with the finished dimensions of the bag. It has to fit nicely inside. So cases like those. So the reason I'm not labeling the bags is because they're just for my own purposes. Uh, I'm usually not, not even gifting them. They usually just stick around. So I guess I don't find the need to go that extra mile uh, to label them. So you have all these patterns. Do you have online classes as well, like beyond the YouTube? Oh, yes. So almost all of my patterns, uh, we have full length, I guess, online workshops, if you will. So it's me making the entire project from start to finish on camera, from taping the, the pages together, if need be, cutting out the paper, attaching the interfacing, all the sewing. I, I show everything on camera and nothing is fast forwarded. So like you really, really see everything at the sewing machine or if I'm pinning something, you see all the details. With your bags, do you experiment with the type of fabrics that you use? I've learned through past experience that I should just stick to quilting cottons for the most part. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of cork fabric or faux leather or vinyl, but because when I'm writing a pattern, I might be ripping the cold and cotton is more forg forgiving. And with the video, because of our video setup, while I'm sewing on camera, I can't sit as close to my sewing machine as I normally can just uh, to prevent shadows and keep my head out of <laughs> out of the camera's view. And so I just find it easier working with the quilting cotton so I don't have to sweat, you know, working with, you know, thicker layers, you know, cork would be a little bit thicker than the quilting cotton. So I could just take it easy more or less when I'm on camera. That was an interesting product that came out, that cork, that sewable cork. Oh, yeah, it's so great to work with. I think it looks really super professional and really unique, especially if people are selling at craft fairs or selling online or giving a gift, um, something just really different. And it's sustainable too. Talking about fabric, how big is your fabric stash? <laughs> I have, I think it's three Billy bookcases from Ikea. I, when we moved into this house, I decided to keep the fabric in the basement separate from the studio, which ended up being a good plan because then I can pull fabric for either a quilt or a bag and try to leave most of the mess in the basement. So I have one full bookcase devoted to all Tula Pink and I'm about out of room. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point because none of the Tula Pink can go. It has to stay with me, but she keeps coming out with more lines twice a year. So um, what's a girl to do? <laughs> <laughs> so do you buy the whole line when, when it comes out? I do. And it's in varying amounts. For instance, the for bag making or just the projects that I like to make, the large scale prints are my favorite from Tula Pink's fabric lines. So I'll usually buy several yards of the large scale prints and maybe less of the, the smaller blender types or the, you know, the tinier prints but I have to have, you know, at least one of one of each design. Is it your preference to just work with one fabric when you make a bag or do you like to use five? Generally, it's one for the exterior and one for the lining. Sometimes, I mean, I have a small amount of patterns that require, say, like three different fabrics, but it's usually just the two, one for the inside, one for the outside. So your go-to amount, what is the amount that bag makers buy? I usually recommend to people if they're... Purchasing fabric for a bag, they're not sure which bag, to get one yard of each. So one yard for the exterior, one yard for the lining. Pouches, a half a yard is more than plenty for most pouches. So that's a good place to start. Do you think that's one reason why you sew with solids so that you don't have to make the yardage call? <laughs> I do stash solids by one yard cuts at least. I don't know. I, I guess I just came arbitrarily to that. Um, I fold my fabric onto comic book boards. And for some reason, the one yard to me, just visually, it just feels like the perfect amount on the comic book board. So what are your favorite colors? Well, you said tulip pink, so you must like brights. If I could make a rainbow quilt every time I made a quilt, um, I would be really happy. But, you know, every quilt can't be rainbow because then, I don't know, they just sort, sort of start to blend together. But like, yeah, the rainbow colors, I really love them. Those really punchy, mm -hmm. bright hues. Is there any color that you wouldn't sew with? I mean, brown, unless I was, you know, making an, an all leather bag, you know, leather bags in brown look pretty nice, I think. But as far as quilting cottons, I really don't have, I might have one or two pieces of brown in Kona's, but um, not other than that. Your quilts, are they modern or traditional? I would say probably traditional. I was, list I was watching an interview that Tula Pink gave a lot of years ago, and I don't remember who the interviewer was, but 
she explained why she her quilts are traditional, but she's using modern fabrics. And I guess I'm sort of in that same vein. Obviously, she's a phenomenal quilter and I, you know, can't compare to that, but definitely the more traditional looking blocks. I like a lot of stars um, that tends to catch my eye as far as quilts go. Did you say that you had a horse? I do. Her name's Olive. <laughs> and is she nearby or is she far away? Uh, she's 30 minutes away. So I'm at the barn. I ride four days a week and then my daughter rides another day. So that's, I'm at the, the barn five days a week. Are you a show jumper or? Uh... Olive is a ex race horse. So she, she ran in two races. She made $242 at the racetrack and uh, now she's a jumper. <laughs> do horses need quilts at all? Um, well, they do have blankets that they wear to keep them warm when it's really cold. Um, I use a saddle pad, which I guess I could make my own. I haven't. Um, there's actually a great shop on Etsy that sells all manner of things for horse people, like a helmet bag, a bag for your saddle, like all sorts of stuff. I haven't delved into that yet. I, I bought a few of the patterns, but, uh, there's just, you know, a million different pa pa patterns and projects, not enough time in the day. So if people want to contact you or visit your website, how did they get a hold of you? Uh, my website's uh, www.sosweetness.com. And if someone has a question or concern, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been wonderful getting to know you. Thank you so much. This was a blast. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Sarah Lawson. I'm currently using her free Windsor pouch pattern to pack my charging cords in on my Alaskan cruise. If you have been looking for a great bag pattern, go check out her website or her YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to her patterns, her channel, and her social media in the links in the notes below. Next up on Karen's Quilt Circle is Kina Tanji Dorsey. And we will be talking about those big, colorful African fabrics and how to use them in your quilts. And you don't want to miss it, so be sure to subscribe. Next time you're in your sewing room, be sure to have Karen's Quilt Circle playing in the background. I have interviewed so many amazing people on this series. Let one inspire you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.